What's up, YouTube? Team Movies here with this new Netflix film premiering tomorrow called uh, Sex Tuplets. Does that film stars uh, Does that film stars uh, Marla Wayne? I decided to go ahead and do my top ten favorite Marla Wayne movies because, like, out of all the Wayne brothers, I think probably Marla Wayne's is probably my favorite. Maybe next to Damon Wayne's. Uh, you know, Sean Wayne's would probably be my third favorite. Uh, um, probably uh, Keenan uh, Ivory Wayne's is probably. Well, maybe, you know, I got, one of these days, I'm going to do, like, a ranking of my favorite out of the Wayne Brothers, because there's some, like, you know, the Wayne Brothers, I've always been a fan of, you know, Damon, I love, uh, Keenan, I mean, I've always been a fan of the Wayne Brothers, but, uh, I think Marlon Wayne has probably done more film, like, I think Marlon and, Sh and uh, Damon has done more films than the other, uh, Wayne Brothers have, but, uh, anyway, with, with that being said, here's my 10 favorite Marlon Wayne movies, all right. Coming in at number 10, all right, I haven't seen this movie for a while, so I, I gotta rewatch this film again one of these days, but uh, it's a basketball film for the six men. Now, it's about these uh, these two brothers, played by Marla Wayne and uh, Kadeem uh, Hardison, who has, like, always wanted to be, uh, you know, you know, who always wanted to be, like, uh, basketball heroes and all that, so pretty much they uh, end up staying out um, as a child athletes, and they are now, like, a college uh, players at un at the uh, University of Washington, but tragedy ends up uh, striking during a game uh, where where uh, Kenny, who's a superstar other family, uh, sustains a failure uh, heart attack while playing, and so, like, this, of course, uh, forces Ant Antony to, like, become the uh, leader on the court, but, get this, uh, the, you know, the brother, Kenny, comes back as a ghost. So, this is kind of a, uh, this is actually a funnier version of Ghost Dad, because Ghost Dad was horrible. But, uh, Six Men, I guess you could say is like Marlon Wayne's um, version of Ghost Dad. I, I, I quite like this film. I mean, yeah! you know, it, it's really hilarious. I mean, Marlon Wayne's as a basketball player, why not? That, that was pretty cool to watch. Uh, the movie was directed by this uh, director named Randall Miller, who I know did a really decent job at directing. Uh, I really liked his like uh, dynamic chemistry with uh, Kadeem uh, Hardison. You know, their brother uh, dynamic chemistry was pretty cool to watch, and the basketball scenes were decent. I mean, it's a really interesting film. I mean, you know, uh, Marlon Wayans is Kenny pretty much comes back to try and uh, help, tr pretty much help his brother win uh, games. So. How cool is that right there? But, uh, uh, but yeah, if you guys, you know, haven't seen The Six Men yet, it's a really decent one. I mean, the reviews haven't, you know, aren't the best, but, hey, it's a Marlon Wayne movie. Mean, like, his films don't get the best critical response, so, yeah. Alright. Coming in at number nine is another movie that did not get any critical response at all. And that is the film, it's pretty much a comedy for, uh, for uh, Fifty Shades of Black. And it's really like a spoof of the Fifty Shades uh, franchise. And I gotta say, this is a better Fifty Shades movie than the actual adaptations. I really quite enjoyed Fifty Shades of Black. I mean, you got, uh, you really got uh, Marlon Wayans as uh, the uh, spoof of Christian Grey, who name, whose name is uh, Christian uh, Black. Who, of course, you know, falls for, uh, for Hannah Steele, uh, played by uh, Kali Hawk. And, of course, and, of course, it's a spoof of, um, of you know, Fifty Shades. So, stuff that happens, this is like a comedic version of Fifty Shades. And, like I said, it's a, it's a better version of Fifty Shades of Grey. I mean, you know, your you know a film is bad when a spoof film is, ends up when a film that spoofs your film is better than the actual film itself. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Fifty Shades of Black is a really great one. And you also had, uh, Jane Seymour, which I love Jane Seymour here. Uh, you had Mike Epps, who plays, uh, who actually plays, um, Hannah's, uh, dad in this. I love, uh, Mike Epps. Lawrence Henderson was great. Uh, you also had, uh, King Bach in this, uh, yeah, it's a really funny one. I mean, yeah, if you guys haven't seen Fifty Shades of Black yet, do yourself a favor. Go check it out. I mean, and, you know, 
the jokes that, like, they, of course, poke lots of uh, jokes of other stuff, like, you know, besides Fifty Shades, they also, uh, you know, they also spoofed the, uh, they actually spoofed Django and Chain in uh, one scene, uh, they also spoofed uh, Roots, uh, they spoofed, uh, oh yeah, they spoofed, uh, they spoofed uh, Whiplash, I mean, yeah, Fifty Shades, like, Fallen Ways is kind of a king of spoof films, and Fifty Shades of Black is a really funny one. All right. Speaking of spoof, my number eight favorite ball. All right, my number eight favorite ball game movie goes. My number eight favorite Malloway movie goes to a haunted house. Now, this is of course a spoof of paranormal activity, and a, a haunted house too. I should quite enjoy too. But a haunted house, the first film, is even better. I mean, it's pretty much about this uh, couple played by, uh, you know, played by Malloways and uh, a sexy uh, Atkins who just like moved into their dream house, and so like uh, they end up learning that they're not alone and. Uh, they also learn uh, that their house is haunted, and uh, his wife, uh, Keisha, uh, you know, is also possessed by a demon. So, there's that too. <laughs> and it's really hilarious. Like, there are some really laugh-out funny scenes in this. Like, there's a scene where, uh, where Ball and Wayne's character thinks that he's, you know, having sex with his wife. But it turns out he's actually having sex with a ghost. <laughs> oh man, the haunted house is, is a hoot. And you also had Cedric the Entertainer, who plays like a priest. Uh, Nick Swanson was in this. Uh, David Koechner. Uh, J.B. Smooth. Then, of course, the second one, by the way, uh, was a spoof of The Conjuring and Annabelle. And if you see Anna let me just tell you, if you see Annabelle in The Haunted House 2, you're not going to want to look at Annabelle the same way. Let me just put it that way. But, uh, yeah, Haunted House is a really funny gem. And, by the way, the directors of Fifty Shades of Black and the Haunted House, uh, Michael uh, Tadis, he's also the director of Sex Tuplets, which comes out uh, on Netflix tomorrow, so there's that, too. All right, coming in at number seven, it's going to be a bit of an unpopular opinion, but most of these movies are going to be unpopular. Uh, coming in at number seven is going to Little Man. Now, if you ever want to see Marlon Wayans as a as pretty much a baby, this is your film right here. And this is of course a film that uh, teams Sean Wayans and Marlon Wayans together, and it's also from the same guys who. It's also directed by uh, the other brother, Keenan Ivory Wayans, and it's a really funny one. Like, it's, it's worth this uh, dwarf uh, criminal uh, named uh, Calvin, played by uh, Marla Wayne, who ends up joining his uh, his brother, uh, Percy, played by Sean Wayne, to steal a very expensive, uh, huge diamond in a jewelry store for the mobster walk-in, played wonderfully by Chaz Palmateri, and they end up being chased by the police, and Calvin ends up hiding the stone in uh, the purse of an uh, executive named uh, Vanessa Edwards, who's, like, husband... Uh, and, uh, the, uh, husband Daryl is, you know, oh, by the way, uh, Percy is played by Tracy Morgan, by the way, I kind of screwed up that one there, but, uh, but he ends up hiding out, uh, with this, uh, at this, um, at this guy's house named, uh, like, uh, the woman of Vanessa, uh, played by, uh, Kerry Washington, uh, her husband played by Daryl, um, Named Daryl, played by Sean Wayne, wants to have a baby and all. So Perry ends up convincing uh, Calvin to like uh, dress up as a baby to be uh, left in front of the uh, you know doorstep and you know so he's pretty much posing as a baby to uh, get away from some criminals who's after the jewel. And of course he's you know trying to get away from the police and all that. And uh, you had I uh, I mean Kerry Washington was great. Uh, David Al Greer was in this. Uh, you had Tracy Morgan. Um, 
Uh, John Witherspoon, you know, from Friday fame was in this. I I really quite like a little man. You know, it... You know, uh, Low Man didn't really get the best response when it got released, but it's kind of more of a guilty pleasure. Mind. Like, it is a dumb film. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. It's a really, it's sort of a dumb film, but it's actually those films that, you know, you can just watch and, you know, just can't take seriously, you know? And, yeah, I still sort of wish we got a sequel to this, because I will love to seen another Low Man. I mean, you know, uh, Marlon and Sean's, Wayne's chemistry in this was off the hook, and, you know, Tracy Morgan still lots of scenes, I mean, yeah, I really like Little Man. Alright, coming in at number six is a movie called Above the Rim. Now, this is also a basketball-based movie, and it stars the likes of a Dwayne Martin, a Tupac, um, you also had, uh, you know, the late, great Bernie Mac was in this, um, uh, Singer uh, Leon was in this, and you know it's about this uh, young uh, professional basketball player uh, played by uh, Dwayne Martin, and he his character's name uh, Kyle Lee, who's like a very talented basketball player in high school, and he uh, he also uh, ends up waiting to find out um, that if he wants a scholarship to uh, Georgetown, and so like he ends up finding himself in a dilemma over a uh, playground basketball tournament. And he also must uh, decide to whether uh, to follow uh, his good-hearted coach, you know, or follow this uh, local gangster, you know, named Bertie, played by Tupac. And uh, Marlon Wayne's in this uh, plays his character named uh, Bugaloo, who's really like this womanizing, uh, who's pretty much like Kyle's uh, womanizing, uh, yet yeah, uh, goofy best friend who ends up spending uh, a year in the juvenile uh, detention. And he also is, like, bullied by uh, Bernie and his, uh, gang members, so... So, yeah, uh, Tupac was great in this. I mean, you know, of course we all know Tupac as a famed rapper, but I'm not gonna lie, Tupac was actually a really decent actor. I mean, he's no, like, Oscar-caliber actor, nothing like that, but he was actually not all that bad with stuff like Juice, um, with, uh, Above the Rim. I mean, yeah, You know, uh, yeah, Above the Rim is a really, is a really funny film, and really like the chemistry with Dwayne Martin and, uh, and Tupac, their chemistry was pretty decent, and, you know, Marlon Wayne's, like, the movie was full on drama, but Marlon Wayne's had, like, a comedic, uh, like, comedic timing in this film. And yeah, if you guys haven't seen Above the Rim, it's a really decent one. I mean, anyway, um, also in, in Above the Rim, you had Bernie Mac as a uh, crack addict too. So one more for you guys for there. God, that's Bernie Mac, by the way. But uh, yeah, if you guys haven't seen Above the Rim. It's a really nice one. Alright. Okay, coming in at number five is another film that paired Molly Wayne's with one of his brothers, and this one is Mo Money. Where Marlon Wayne's actually uh, paired up with his uh, brother Damon Wayne's, and in it, uh, you know, Damon Wayne's plays this like a left, a lifelong con man who ends up meeting this uh, girl named uh, Amber St- uh, Amber uh, Evans, played by uh, Stacy Dash, and he ends up trying to impress her by uh, cleaning up his act and doing uh, things the uh, honest way. And so you've got uh, this guy named uh, Ted uh, Forrest, played by Richie Butler who also works for this uh, Dynasty card uh, company, and he ends up being murdered by this uh, character named uh, Keith uh, Heading, uh, played by this actor named uh, John uh, Thai. And so, like, they end up pretty much uh, switching the tape before, like, uh, the police arrive. And, uh, and, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, he ends up getting the help from uh, his like 
Cool. Alright, so, uh, so, anyway, so, uh, Damon Wayne's character ends up getting the help of his uh, brother, who's also a fellow common named Seymour, and he learns, uh, that, you know, Char like, pretty much, um, But, uh, really, um, Damon Wayne's character is also, like, a, uh, becomes a, uh, mailroom, uh, clerk at a, a credit card firm where, uh, where, you know, uh, Stacey Dash's Amber character, uh, works at, and so, like, he ends up being, uh, justified by his, uh, actions because he knows that, uh, he's, like, pretty much the only, uh, one stealing, um, the company and, uh, not harming the individual, uh, car owners and all. So there's like uh, these uh, hitmans who are on his track, and and uh, so David Wayne has to uh, pair up with his, uh, you know, with his common uh, brother, you know, played by uh, you know Marlon Wayne's, to uh, get away from these uh, from these other uh, criminals that are like after him and all. And Mo Money is it's, it's really funny. I mean, David Wayne's and Marlon Wayne's, you know, they haven't really done a movie together like lately, but they both really work well together. And, you know, uh, they had some, this movie has some, uh, pretty, you know, funny lines in it. I mean, Stacey Dash was pretty decent. Um, the comedic dynamic chemistry with Damon Wayans and Marlon Wayans really sells this film. Uh, Stacey, like I said, Stacey Dash was decent. I mean, it's a really, it's a really, uh, interesting, uh, film, man. And anyway, if you guys haven't seen, uh, Mo Money, go check it out. It's a really nice one, and... I mean, it's been a while since I've seen more money, but I remember watching it one time, and, you know, it made me be impressed by, uh, by Damon Wayans and Marlon Wayans and all, and, yeah, I gotta rewatch this movie again, because more money is a really one. Alright, coming in at number four is going to be... Is going to be the Darren Aronofsky film, Wreck'em from a Drain. Now, Marlon Wayans is best known as, like, Marlon Wayans is best known as a comedic actor, but I'm not going to lie, Marlon Wayans is actually not that bad of a dramatic actor, because I thought Marlon Wayans was great in this. You know, the film is based on a novel by uh, Herbert uh, Shelby Jr., and it's a drama that uh, pretty much concerns uh, four people trapped in uh, their uh, drug addiction. Uh, you've got uh, Harry, played by Jared Leto, and his best friend Tyrone, played by Marlon Wayans. Who are like heroin addicts living in uh, New York City, in uh, Conan Island, I should say. And uh, Harry's um, girlfriend, uh, play, a uh, Marin, played by uh, Jennifer Connelly, is also a fellow addict, uh, you know, trying to uh, distance herself from her wealthy uh, father. And so you, you've got uh, Alan Bursley, who plays uh, Harry's uh, mother, who also spends like pretty much spends like the day um, watching her TV, watching TV and all that. And it's a really great performance by Marlon Wayans. I mean. It shows Marlon Wayans could do more than just, than, you know, just straight up comedy. Because I thought Marlon Wayans was great in this. You know, uh, him as a uh, heroin addict, that was interesting, um, to say. And his, like, dynamic chemistry with uh, Jared Leto was good. I mean, this movie is a pretty controversial film because it takes the looks of lies of, uh, you know, of addicts and all that. And, and yeah. And I'm not going to lie, I think maybe uh, Marlon Wayans could have scored an Oscar nomination for this, because he was actually that good in this movie. And it is a weird, kind of, pretty much a weird film and all that, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, Welcome from a Dream is a really interesting film. All right, coming in at number three is going to be White Checks. Now, White Chicks is about these uh, two FBI agents, uh, played by uh, Marlon and Sean Wayne, who pretty much accidentally foil a drug bust, and so, like, as punishment, you know, they, they end up being uh, forced to uh, be pretty much, um, uh, they decide to uh, penetrate a, uh, like, a, you know, go undercover as white females. To uh, pretty much uh, bust these uh, you know drug these uh, you know drug dealers and all that, and 
I mean, this movie would not get made today. Like, it's pretty much with uh, two black actors playing white girls. That movie would definitely not get made today. But it's still really funny. One. I mean, it's directed by Keenan Ivory Waynes. Uh, Marlon and Sean Waynes both had great chemistry, great on-screen chemistry. Uh, Terry Crews was great in this. Uh, you also had Jamie King, uh, Brittany Daniels, John, uh, the late great John Hurd. Uh, Jennifer Carpenter was in this. Uh, Busy Phillips. I mean, uh, yeah, really good uh, cast. And the movie's pretty funny, and it's hysterical. And, yeah, and... There's been talks about a sequel of White Chicks, but it never really, like, it never really went anywhere, but I'd love to see a um, White Chicks sequel. Alright, my number two favorite is another spoof comedy, and that will be, I'm doing a double header here. My number two favorite will be Scary Movie 1 and Scary Movie 2. Now, the Scary Movie, now, Marlon Wayans, of course, plays the role of a shorty, who's, of course, a very, uh, a very, uh, dumb and um, stoner, and Marlon Wayans, I love him as Shorty, I mean, he, like, some of the lines that, uh, he uses in this is just, cracks me up every time, like, the scene where, uh, you know, news reporters are, you know, trying to interview him about, uh, about the, uh, de um, the murders and all that, and he was telling, like, instead of telling, um, him about the, uh, victim and all, he was, <laughs> like, he ended up telling, the news reports of what he did to the mix. So, <laughs> I mean, and and of course it was uh, both of them were directed by uh, Keenan and Ivory Waynes. Uh, you also had uh, Sean Waynes in this. Uh, Anna Ferris, of course, was great in this. Uh, it's a, and also I like the um, other scene where uh, where Ghostface is all rapping and all, and and Ghostface ends up killing everyone else except for Shorty. And, of course, uh, the scene where, uh, Shorty and, uh, Ghostface, uh, you know, does that, uh, thing on the phone where they say, What up? Did I literally used to have that, uh, mask, by the way? The, uh, Ghostface mask with, uh, Ghostface's tongue sk sticking out? I literally used to have that mask one time. Don't know where it went, but, uh, yeah. And, of course, Scary Movie 2 was, I mean, I probably still prefer Scary Movie 1 over Part 2. But I still quite love Scary Movie 2. Especially the uh, interaction with uh, Shorty and the bird. You know, when uh, the bird... <laughs> when the bird uh, tells... Uh, when, you know, Shorty tells the bird Polly wanted a cracker, then the bird says um, to Shorty, Polly wants a mama sweet ass. Then, you know, Shorty says... Uh, you know, I, I'll just, uh, you guys seen, uh, Scare Movie, but I'm not gonna, uh, say it out loud, because I'm out in public, but, uh, yeah, the, um, you know, the competition with, uh, Shorty and the bird cracked me up. Then, of course, the scene where, uh, where a tree actually ended up pretty much smoking Shorty. Like, you know, the tree, of course, um, like, pretty much the bag of weed, uh, ended up, you know, uh, coming alive, and, uh, you know, rolling up Shorty and, you know, uh, pretty much uh, rolling him up as a blunt and, of course, a uh, smoke of Shorty. Great funny scene. And, uh, and, yeah, I really love Scary Movie 1 and 2. And I'm, and I'm still disappointed that Marlon Wayans never reprised his role as Shorty again. Because I would, I would totally be down to see Marlon Wayans come back as a character. I, you know, I really quite like the Shorty character and, yeah, Scary Movie 1 and 2 are seriously two of the funniest spoof movies you'll see. I mean, both of them are directed by Keenan Ivory Waynes. Uh, Sean Waynes was great in them. Love these movies. I mean, if you guys never seen Scary Movie 1 or 2 yet, do yourself a favor. Go check them out. I mean, they, of course, uh, spoof films like, uh, you know, Scream, I Know What You Did Last Summer, Poltergeist, The Exorcist, etc. And, yeah, Scary Movie 1 and 2, some classics right there. Alright, my number one favorite Marlon Way movie of all time is going to Don't Be a Menace to South Central While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood. Now, I mean, I never really care much for the full-on name. I just call it regular Don't uh, Be a Menace. But, I mean, this is, of course, a uh, spoof film of a boys in the hood, juice. And I, this is actually my favorite movie that Keenan Ivory Wayne uh, directed. And... 
I mean, I mean, Marlon Wayans, of course, plays a, you know the cousin of a Sean Wayans' character, and he's really a dumb character. I mean, he's of course part gangster, and he's also part an idiot as well. But he's a great um. Addition. I mean, don't be a match. South Central is a really funny film. Like I said, it's a spoof film. Uh, you also had Bernie Mac as, uh, like, the uh, police officer here. I mean, I love Bernie Mac in this film. Uh, Sean Wayne's, like, my favorite part of Sean Wayne was uh, where um, he tells these people, do we have a problem? Then he pulls up, like, some major uh, MK, uh, you know, 47s and all. And, of course, which was, of course, a spoof of a menace uh, to society and all. And, of course, the scene where uh, Marlon Wayne's character is, like, in a job interview and you know, I mean, Marlon Wayans' character in this was, like that, he was dumb, but funny. And, of course, you know, Sean Wayans was great. Uh, yeah, if you guys never had a chance to check out Don't Be a Menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood, do yourself a favor, go check it out. It's it's a really funny film. But that's pretty much it. Let me do the quick run now. Uh, Ten, The Six Men. Uh, nine, Fifty Shades of Black. Eight, A Haunted House. Seven, Little Man. Six, Above the Rim. Five, Mo Money. Four, Reckon for a Dream. Uh, three, White Checks. Two, Scary Movie 1 and 2. And one, Don't Be a Menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. Now, Sean Wayne has been in some other stuff as well. Alright. Uh, Marlon Wayans' his other films includes, uh, he was in that movie Naked from uh, Netflix. Uh, he had a part in Norbit, which was horrible. Uh, he was in uh, Dance Flick, which was really uh, He was in G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra, uh, Senseless with uh, David Spade. Um, there was also, um, there was also uh, Coen Brothers' uh, la uh, Lady Killers, uh, The Heat. Uh, Keenan Ivory Wayans' his other film, I'm Gonna Get You, Sucker. Uh, he was in Blank Man with also Damon Wayans. And he was in probably the worst movie on um, this list is Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, someone thought it was a good idea to cast Marlon Wayans in a Dungeons and Dragons movie. Actually, someone thought it was a good idea to make a Dungeons and Dragons movie, period. But, you know. But, uh, yeah, not every. But, yeah, I don't love every Marlon Wayans movie. It's like, there are all some stinkers that have been in that shit. But, uh,. But yeah, um, you know, let me leave it to you guys. What are some of your favorite Marlon Wayne movies? And also, another question is, who, like, which, who are some of your favorite Wayne brothers? Like, do you like, like, are you a Damon uh, fan? Are you a Marlon fan? A Sean fan? Etc. They also have a really cool uh, sister named Kim Wayne, who's also pretty cool, too. But, uh, anyway, you know, drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for more notifications. This here is T-Movie, signing off.